To celebrate the 30th anniversary of Jurassic Park, LEGO released an entire wave of products based off of it, and honestly, these are the LEGO Jurassic Park sets I've wanted since I was a kid. We have the vehicles, we have the characters, we have the visitor center, but above all of that we got the dinosaurs, and what a terrific lineup it is. They all feature exclusive prints, though most are pre-existing molds, like the Dilophosaurus, the Velociraptors, the Triceratops and the T-Rex. However, the all-new, never-seen-before addition to LEGO dinosaur-loving fans is the iconic Brachiosaurus. My favorite out of all of these for sure. I was so hyped about these sets that the first thing I did when I got them from LEGO was taking out all of the dinosaurs from the boxes, even before assembling any of the sets. And I was surprised to find that, aside from the smallest one that was loose inside the box, every other dinosaur was packed in paper wrapping, which was awesome to see. The smallest of the sets is the Velociraptor Escape, a 4 plus super basic LEGO set to put together, with the big juniorized pieces and no stickers, which is great giving us a few cool prints, like the danger sign, the Jurassic Park logo, a radar slope tracking a Velociraptor and an egg element with a peeking dinosaur eye. The Velociraptor has darker tones when compared to previous versions, more in line with the Jurassic Park movie, while keeping the same degree of poseability on the legs, arms and head, and the lower jaw can be opened as well. Staying with the characters of this set, we get the first copy of Dr. Ellie, and brought Robert Muldoon, with a tranquilizer gun far different from what he was carrying in the movie. The main build is rather simple, made out of three different sections, a small fence, a larger fence with a simple gate, poop for giggles and a frog. The last one is the sort of control center, I guess, with a place to clip the walkie-talkie and a winch with a feeding basket. There's also a small buggy with a hot dog on the back. Given the age marking, there's a lot here for kids to play with. The building instructions are also age-appropriate, three different booklets, one for each part of the build, and very simple to follow along, where the left page has the parts needed and the right page the building steps. Going up a notch on the age marking, the Dilophosaurus ambush recreates an iconic scene where Danny's Nedry, trying to leave Isla Nublar during a storm, gets lost in the way and finds his demise at the ends of a Dilophosaurus. During his escape, he drives Jeep 12, a Jeep Wrangler staff vehicle owned by Jurassic Park. Park. The stickers show how muddy the jeep turned out to become, with a few nougat colored elements being added to the mix. If we compare it to Jeep 18 from the Brachiosaurus Discovery set, we kinda see how it was supposed to look without all of the mud. For accuracy's sake, it should have had a winch in the front, which it doesn't, but we do get to see this printed 2x2 tile instead for the front grille. The roof can be easily removed and the front really only has space for the driver. Dennis has a troubled face on one side and an alternate expression on the other, where we can see the slime that the Dilophosaurus spat on him. Out of curiosity, I compared this figure to the one from the T-Rex Rampage set and they are very similar. The back of the torso on the old one was way cooler with the Jurassic Park logo though. The mold on this Dilophosaurus isn't new, but the prints are. It doesn't pose at all since it's a single element, except for the lower jaw that can be opened. Last build of the set is a small scene with a few leaves and the sign for the East Dock. It can be knocked down just like Dennis does in the movie, and the arrow also spins freely, which is amazing attention to detail by the LEGO design team. Even in the middle of all of this there's the Barbasol modified can Dennis was using to smuggle the dinosaur embryos out of the island, that he ends up losing after the encounter with the Dilophosaurus. The white frog element is meant to represent the shaving foam coming out of the can. Third set of the wave is Triceratops Research, and while it perfectly captures a specific movie scene in many ways, ends up being a bit of a lazy design because it features the Jurassic Park Ford Explorer number 4, an almost exact replica of the model we see on the T-Rex breakout set from last year. A Triceratops dinosaur we've already seen before, minus the new prints, with the only notable new thing of this set being the buildable pile of dinosaur poop, which is actually kind 
kinda funny that made its way into a lego set. Now this may actually be intentional as we only get half of the Ford Explorer number 4 on the other set, so if you want one of these cars, this set is actually half the price of the other one. The stickers are exactly the same, the front grill design changes very slightly. The new one doesn't have windscreen wipers, glasses of water or nearly enough equipment. They do fit for passengers though by removing the top assembly and I like how they can still fit Lex and Tim from the visitor center set even though they have the short non-bendable legs. This set comes with Ian and another Ellie. This Ellie has the same clothes with some dirt on them, a different hairstyle and while the main expression is the same, the alternate one isn't. Ian looks very happy until he has eyes on the pile of poop, very similar to his T-Rex breakout version, just less wet and still in one piece when compared to the version from the T-Rex Rampage set. The Triceratops, as mentioned before, features new colors and prints and while not being necessarily a new dinosaur, given how popular it is, will for sure make people end up getting the set. It can be somewhat posed since it has leg movement and can also freely move his neck up, down and to the sides, mouth can't open. The highlight of the set though has to be the buildable pile of poop. And as far as Lego piles of poop go, this one is quite accurate, minus the smell. It also features a frog element, Lego designer's favorite piece, this time around in brown to add some curves to the whole thing. We can actually open it to find the poisonous berries the Triceratops ate that made him sick, just like in the movie. Brachiosaurus Discovery is without a doubt my favorite out of all of the sets, mainly due to the dinosaur alone. The main body doesn't pose at all, maybe to simplify production on these massive multi-piece animals which I can get behind. The tail does spin in place though and so does the neck and head, while also having some degree of up and down movement. This major gap here that allows for that movement does bother me a bit by being so big, it feels like a big chunk was cut off from it. Maybe there's plans to repurpose the elements into a different dinosaur in the future, but still, the only real downside for me. The jaw can, like most of the other dinosaurs, be opened as well. Jeep 18 is a slightly better version of the somewhat bulkier and juniorized Jeep 12 from the Dilophosaurus Ambush set. It does feature the non-muddy design and roll cage, manages to fit two passengers in the front, something Jeep 12 couldn't handle while also having space for a third passenger. Seems fitting as the set has three minifigures, yet another Ellie Settler, a mix of the previous two versions with an alternate open mouth expression that we're all very familiar with, right? Alan Grant also plays a major role in this scene and therefore an obvious inclusion, very similar to past versions of him, and finally John Ammond, hosting the doctors through a test run visit of Jurassic Park while always carrying around his cane tipped with an oval piece of amber. And as much as I like this set in particular, I'm honestly not a big fan of the tree build. The trunk proportions seem a bit off to me and the foliage above quite sparse. There are things that I do really like about it though. If nothing else, it's great for parts to build better trees with lots of brown and leaf elements in dark and olive green. The sign at the base matches that of the T-Rex breakout set and seeing these together I kinda wish Lego made stickers with all of the dinosaur species so we could build our own Jurassic parks. The broken eggshell in the middle of the tree roots must be a reference to that scene where Alan finds them and quotes Ian by saying life found a way as dinosaurs weren't supposed to breathe in Jurassic Park. Above there's a little platform on the tree that is kinda perfect to play out the scene where Alan and the kids spend the night in the forest to be woken up by a brachiosaurus herd. He also has some leaves to lure the Brachiosaurus in and the Velociraptor claw to throw down the tree, just like in the movie. This Lego set would not be complete without another well-hidden frog element, this time around coral colored. Last but not least, the Visitor Center set finally made it as an official product. This is the biggest set of the wave, with two dinosaurs, well, three kinda, six minifigures and largest build we get to see from all of these sets. 
The Velociraptor is the exact same one I've shown in the Velociraptor Escape set. The T-Rex, however, while not being necessarily new, does feature new prints, including some battle scars due to the fight that these two creatures will undertake inside the visitor center, as shown in the movie. The articulation points remain the same as previous versions of the mold, twisting tail, posing legs and arms, lower jaw and a wide range of movements on the neck area. The T-Rex skeleton kinda fits the dinosaur highlight part of this set, so here it is. Being a skeleton of the big boy here, I would have liked the size to match somehow, but it's significantly smaller. I'm also not a fan of all of the different colors used to build it. There's the tan and the dark tan that is to be expected, but then the white, black, regular grey and dark grey pieces feel out of place and take away from the final look. On the minifigure side of things we have John Ammon's grandkids, Tim and Lex. Lex was more of a teenager in the movie, so I would have liked her to have had the shorter bendable legs instead for accuracy's sake. There's also Dr. Wu from the park staff, Ray Arnold and another Alan Grant and the fourth Ellie Sattler of the wave. The visitor center itself looks great for a playset, I'd say. The recognizable thatched roofs are there, the window sections and the entrance with the stickered bone details around the doors. Given how the set has stickers, a few more to give the entrance doors the same look and feel of the movie couldn't have hurt that much, I think. Going in, there's stickers that replicate the decorative dinosaur details that can be seen in the movie and to the sides of them we find two distinct areas, one being the restaurant and the other the lab. In the restaurant there's some tables and displays filled with desserts including the green jello that everyone remembers, right? And if you look closely enough this cake over there does have the mandatory frog element, pink this time around. The lab on the other side has a whole desk with a microscope, computer and a nice one by one printed amber piece with mosquito and all. On the wall a sticker with Mr. DNA, a character that's part of the visitor center interactive tour and the egg incubator, complete with the dome piece and mechanical arm. So many references. The final detail is the banner, made from a plastic type material that can be dropped by flicking this Technic element here, though I find it a bit hard to play out. With Jurassic Park being one of my favorite movies of all time, I personally do really like these sets and I can appreciate the level of care the LEGO design team must have put into them. I would have gone crazy if I had these sets as a kid, being able to play out all of my favorite scenes in LEGO form. I'm not so sure that kids these days get to see the movie though, so the relevancy to the target audience mentioned in the boxes could be argued with. But then again, we're talking dinosaurs here, so yeah, kids will love it regardless of the source material. Out of the five sets, the least appealing to me is the Velociraptor Escape, too juniorized for my taste and we can get the same dinosaur from the Visitor Center set. Dilophosaurus Ambush and Brachiosaurus Discovery have similar vehicles, but are packed with several references to the movie and they have different dinosaurs to offer, with the Brachiosaurus being such a unique one that I'm willing to bet it will never be done again in a Lego set. Triceratops research, as I mentioned, is a bit lazy, but if you don't own any Triceratops or the T-Rex breakout set to get the Ford Explorer, this one is decent and the visitor center, while not offering anything super new, still has two and a half dinosaurs, the only visitor center we will probably ever get out of Lego and again the references to the movie make me relieve beautiful childhood memories. These sets may be age marked for kids but are perfect for Jurassic Park fans like myself who grew up playing the VHS of the movie every weekend for years, until we talk prices that is. Jurassic sets are usually overpriced due to the high production costs of the specialized dinosaur element, so price per piece ratio doesn't do us any good. With that being said, Dilophosaurus Ambush manages to be a fairly priced Lego set at $20, little over 200 pieces, a minifigure, a dinosaur, vehicle and there's still room for an extra build, so great value in my opinion. Velociraptor Escape costs $40 for a mere 137 pieces, which I cannot understand at all. Even with the big juniorized pieces, it is way overpriced. The Triceratops Research, $50 for 281 pieces. Brachiosaurus Discovery, $80 for 512 pieces. 
and the visitor center will be priced at $130 for just 693 pieces. I still feel these three to be overpriced, but it all comes down to whether or not you like Lego Dinosaurs and Jurassic Park. It is fairly common to find these sets with discounts on Amazon, for instance, so if you're in no rush to get any of them, you could probably wait a little bit. If you can't wait, though, they'll be available starting June first. Consider using the links below for your purchases to support the channel and I for one will at some point in time get an extra copy or two of the Brachiosaurus Discovery set for sure. I honestly think it is one of the best Jurassic sets ever made, easily surpassing T-Rex Breakout and possibly the T-Rex Rampage as well. Nostalgia eats really hard with this one.